I'm Danita Young. And I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to More Than Fitness. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. I absolutely love doing this, and I have helped hundreds of thousands of women, and my goal is that I can add some value and contribute into your life today. Girlfriend, you are looking fly. And so are you. And so I think we have to call this More Than Fitness After Dark. <laughs> So we're talking about, well, actually today's a whole, our whole topic is about relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think we got all sexy because that is part of more than fitness, is how you feel about you. Ooh. You're all dressed up. Do you feel sexier? I feel, when you, when you do, you feel more confident. You feel ready to take on the world. Definitely more sexier. And you? Well, I did something crazy. I redefined the word sexy. Ooh. You hear this? I want to hear S-E-X-Y. Seeing excellence in yourself. I like it. Thank I you. really, really like that. You know, well, I had to do it initially because I, my little daughter was around. Mom, you say everything sexy, and I think I would because I think I define sexy as being glamorous or fun, and she only heard the first part of that word. And I said, but that's not what it is. For me, you don't have to be sexy for somebody else. I think if you can look in the mirror, take your clothes off, look at your whole body, and go, you know, I'm doing all right. I see some excellence in me. Correct. Now I'm going through a little bit of an issue as I'm getting older. I have to share with you, I'm having an issue. You know what the issue is? How long it takes to get ready. Okay. Because all of a sudden, I really have to do my makeup and the eyelashes and the hair blowing and everything. It's, you know, because I, I love doing Facebook Lives. I know you do as well. I think you guys all join us a lot, right? But guys like, you know, Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk, and they can all get on and just talk. What does your audience think when you don't have makeup on? Ooh, you know what? I'm glad you brought this up. Yes. Because I recently am doing, it's called a body shame campaign, or otherwise known Ooh. as kind of like a... A campaign about self-love and Ooh. what I recently did is I, I really honed into to what is my most uncomfort and okay. I held up a sign and on that sign it says I'm still beautiful without makeup and it took me a second to like really hold that sign up and like own that that statement because truly honestly you feel like a different person it's like a mask when you have makeup on you right. feel more confident and sexy and you feel like you're comfortable in your skin because you have this mask on but the second that you take off your makeup it all of a sudden you become vulnerable well okay but see here's my problem with that i don't mind i i'm in love with a man who allows me to take off my makeup and says these words that every man should say to his woman oh, you look better without that on. agreed same, yep. However, absolutely. one of my girlfriends, while I was Facebooking, she actually posted and she said, are you okay? And I'm like, what do you mean? She said, you look really tired. Tired. I've heard the like, tired. I, you know what? Yes. I said, I'm not wearing makeup. And she's like, no, I think it's more than that. It's like, no, no, no. Just chill out. When you start putting on false eyelashes yes. and all this base, and you cover all the imperfections, yes. it's a different level of beauty and glamorous. And I'm sorry. Yes. That's why the makeup industry is so huge. So yes. We're screwed. Yeah. We're screwed. We're telling you we're screwed. And, and I don't mean that in the good sense of the word. But I, I think, you know what, like you said, to be able to run around the house and to feel comfortable and to, to own that beauty whenever you need to. Like I personally, what I say is people are not going to recognize me in public at all because I mostly run around with no makeup and I wear my PJs. Do you think you look that different? I, I mean... Honestly, like if you saw me, my hair is like probably this big, and I, I've got, I've, I've, I'm, I definitely feel like I can, I, I, I can hide my, yeah, I can hide this appearance. I <laughs> so I was in a hotel the other morning uh, because I've been on the road, and I actually for breakfast I was really hungry, and I put on a giant floppy hat, uh -huh. my fiance's big basketball shorts because I need to be comfortable, Love and it. I almost put on the dark glasses, but then I thought someone's gonna go, she's like a wacky old lady, yeah. look at that lady running around. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I didn't want to have to make myself prettier. Yes. So I think the question for you guys mm -hmm. is to really take a moment and look in the mirror without makeup and really fall in love with yourself because I love how I look. I have no problems with that. But I'm also just feeling a little bit older. So that's become my, you know, we talk about relationships. One is relationship with yourself, your spouse, and your family, your loved one. Correct. Those are different kind of relationships. And I, I'm afraid that most of us, because I didn't really have one, don't have a positive strategy for success in those areas. Yeah. You know, I think it comes, especially for, absolutely right, by the way, I feel like it comes um, probably how you were raised, what you, what you saw growing up, right? Well, you know, I actually, I go back, part of the philosophy that I do, and I do a thing called Forbes Factor Live, and you guys, if you ever want to know how to break through some serious barriers, we do amazing work, but a lot of it comes down to your first memory and the kind of house that you grew up in. Yes. So yes, that drives a lot of it, but even, this is where I have a problem with school. I took math class and science and some algebra and some calculus and Spanish. 
You know what the class was I didn't take? How to, ma how to balance your checkbook. Missed that class totally. <laughs> I used to go to the ATM machine, truthfully, yeah. to figure out how much money I had because I was really bad at the balancing your checkbook thing. And how to have personal relationships. Yes. I was bullied in school. I think a lot of people suffered from that. And they didn't teach you how do you behave with the opposite sex and friends? I mean, what are the responsibilities when you're a friend with somebody? Mm -hmm. How do I know you're my friend? What do you do? Uh, loyalty, compassion, mm -hmm. sincerity. Uh, do you think your friends are... Just think about this. Think about your close circle of friends. Well, they say that you're the sum of the five people you're closest to. Correct. So one of those, if that's a nagging mother, mm. that's not fun to have in your life. If that's a, a spouse who's dragging you down, who's right. always critical of you, you know, at what point do you get to hit the delete button on relationships? Correct. So if you're my friend, I think I want to talk about the fact that people don't know how to even define the word friend. You know, is a friend someone who will pick you up at the airport or drop everything for you? Or have you had those people when things are bad, they disappear? You know, or you're desperately in love and you're happy and they disappear because people want to put you down. Mm. Is that a situation where your friend actually put you down when you were happy? Absolutely. What happened? You know, usually I find that it's insecurity-based, mm -hmm. right? I feel like if it, if it is a, a friend or if it's a family member or if it's a loved one, so such as a spouse, if they have insecurities, it ends up putting you down. So I think that the main principle is to, to really watch our own insecurities to make sure that we don't do that to anyone else. That's very true. So they talk about relationships. There was an adage that said 50-50. You know, mm -hmm. when you're in love, you're 50. It's not 50-50. It's 100 100 100 <laughs> okay, high five right there. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. It is 100 100. Well, what does that mean for you? What it means for me is when when you think that you only have to go halfway. What you do is you don't put everything into the relationship. Right. You think I'm going just to give enough so that person's going to give and then I'm going to give and then that person's going to give and what you what then what ends up happening is that leads to a lot of expectations on that yes. person because you, you said, well, I went this far, how come you're not going this far? Mm -hmm. And so truly when you, what we just said, as far as 100, 100, you're, gonna, you're committing yourself going, a relationship means I don't care what you've done in the past, I don't care what you're doing in the future, I'm not setting expectations, I'm gonna 100% show up 100% and you have to show up however you're gonna show up. You it's... can't, you can't force that person, right? Right, and we live in a very disposable society where you think, you know, there's always something better on the corner. I'm gonna say for the first time in my life, I'm very much in love, and I'm experiencing something that's very, very different. It's and that beautiful. is, Sorry. no, it is insanely beautiful because I look at my partner mm -hmm. and I just fall into him and say, you know what, I'm I'm 110% there. I've never in my whole life experienced what 110% feels like. And that means there's no net, there's no holding back, it's very raw, um, and it's and it's sometimes a little scary because I've pushed all my eggs into a basket and go, you know, I just I love you. Mm -hmm. And we say it all it's see nothing to me, we say it all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so beautiful. So I get I get goosebumps hearing about people that are in true love and you can feel it. You can feel it immediately. Because those that are not fully, truly in love, you also can sense that as well. Right. And and honestly, Forbes, I've, I have listened to your stories and I've heard you talk and I think one of the most beautiful things is about your past has been difficult that's led you to the most amazing woman that you are and you haven't had rock solid relationships in your life. So how do you just say, I show up 110% in my relationship when y your past relationships have led you to believe that maybe there's there's really not good people out there anymore? I think for me, I just had to do a whole lot of work on me. I think I'm where I am now, and I'm in my 50s, but I didn't, I didn't get this. I, I don't know what I thought. I actually had very good parents, and they you know, were in love, and they were married for 40 years. They both died at 70. Um, but somehow, they didn't instill in me this whole... I didn't have a lot of friends growing up, because I was very focused on what I was doing. And I think the person who came into my life actually taught me what it was like to be that vulnerable, and, it, and it's, but it's okay if you're not perfect, which I think my family raised me to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I was that A student. I graduated college with two degrees in three years, and it was all about what I can do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I met somebody who says, I don't really care what you do. I just like you. Mm. Like, oh, it was very unusual, very, very wonderful. I also think being a mom for me has helped a lot because when the I... conditional love part? <laughs> let me tell you something. These two creatures just came along. Creatures, I love They them. are. They started calling me mommy. I no. oh, love you. And... It's, uh, I'm glad I didn't miss that. I didn't. I had my kids at 42, and I'm going to tell you that having a dog is great, yeah. having a kid is better. And is it always easy? No, but 
at the end of the day, I'm so proud of understanding what it did to my heart. So I actually created something, and I'm going to share this with you guys, because I don't think I understood why I held back. And so there's a word. Because held, you held back from what? From a lot of things. Okay. I was shy growing up. Okay. I was afraid of success. I was afraid of failure. I was afraid of rejection. I had all of those things. And then somehow in my 20s, I remembered I had this card in my pocket. So watch this. Do you ever see the movie Wizard of Oz? Yes. Okay. It's about four people okay. who wanted permission to get something. Okay. So one wanted courage. That's what the lion wanted. Scarecrow wanted a brain. Tin Man wanted a heart. Mm. And she wanted to go home. Ah. And they thought that this great wizard could mm. give them those things. Got it. Okay. What they, number one, what happened when they got there, the great wizard turned out to be what? A guy behind a curtain. <laughs> he wasn't even real. A fake. Correct. Right, which is unfortunate. You think, oh, well, the movie's probably going to end there because he's not real. How, he, they can't get what they wanted. Yeah. But what he did was he turned the mirror on them and said, guess what? You've had it inside you all along. So in essence, do you ever play, and one more thing, do you ever play the game Mother May I? Yes. So what Mother May I, can I? Can Mother, I? may I what? May I take like five giant yeah, steps? Yeah, yeah. Can I take five giant steps? And then the kid would say, no, you can take three little baby steps. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what were you doing? You were asking permission of somebody who didn't give it to you. So I think I concluded in my life, one of the issues is that we're always waiting for permission. Mm -hmm. Because we're told no our whole lives. Weren't you told no, you can't stay out at dark, you Correct. can't wear something too short. What was a big no in your family? What couldn't you do? Swimming. I couldn't, I uh, just go out to the pool and swim alone. That was a no. That is, I yeah. mind you couldn't eat after you swim. Yeah. And there were a lot of no's yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. You're conditioned as a society to ask for permission. Correct. Well, what I've discovered in my work is that if I could give you permission to do something, so what would it be? If I could give you one permission right now, anything you want. I relate to when you said the fear of rejection, the fear of success, you know, that just kind of like under this. And so I think it would just be that same kind of me breaking out of the shell, I guess you could say. Love it. That I, I just want, I just want to be able to feel like I, like I, I don't need to feel like this, you know, pressure that I can just be me. And okay, that's for no okay. stop right there. That's 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 perfect because okay. so many of you are going to relate to that. Okay. I want permission to just be me. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Think about one thing that you actually want, and you think, well, I would like permission to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was growing up, I wanted permission to not have a job. And so I remember that I had this little card in my pocket. The story behind the card goes, we all get gifts in life. We've all seen the little kid who can play piano at three or the girl who can sing opera at 11. Yes. What do you think your gift is? A light inside of me in which I am able to help others become a more optimistic and happier person because of this vibration that they can be around. And I'm going to say that's exactly what her gift is. And if you're in our community... You know that. That's mm -hmm. exactly how you show up. And I'll bet you didn't always know that, though. No. No, But when you found it, not. are you happier? Oh, absolutely. Right. Yes. So here's the thing. I, there's a gifting suite. I bet you didn't know this. Right before you come down from heaven, and you can believe this or not, but it's my story. Okay. You come down from heaven, right? And there's a little gifting suite. And everybody gets a gift. So she can sing opera, and he can play the piano. Beyonce was in there. And that little woman, she took three gifts. She took, she could sing, dance, and she was really beautiful. Oh, Damn it, there was nothing left for me. Oh. And so the gifting fairy said, well, wait, here, take this card. And I looked at the card, just put it in your pocket. And I literally didn't really look at the card until I was up in my 20s. And it's a steel card. And it says on the card, I don't know if you can see that. It says, I hereby grant you permission. And then there's a blank. And so I was in my 20s. Mm. And I said, I am going to run away and work for Club Med. Mm. Nobody thought that was a good idea. Mm. So I hereby grant myself to run away and do that. I hereby grant myself permission to be on Broadway. Hereby mm. grant and I used to do this all the time. Mm. Then I flipped over the card. And I don't think I ever looked at the back of it. Read what that says. I didn't think she was ever going to let me touch this card, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty precious. I think I'm really excited this card's in my hand. This card never expires. It's replaceable, it's transferable, and it may be used at any time as often as needed. Caution, this card is to be used for good, not evil. Be careful what you wish for. Forbes O'Reilly. If you'd like to grant I'm permission... Like, we're going to say it's the last part. Yes. Okay. You're going to get that. Because be careful what you wish for. When you don't be careful what you wish for. When you don't need permission, you're unstoppable. Now you want to make sure you don't break the law. Like I don't need. I I want permission to rob a bank. Well, don't do that, okay? Because yeah. that's not good. <laughs> but you can have permission. Well, did you mm. start this whole conversation to be you? Mm -hmm. And so if I said I hereby grant you permission to be you, hold mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. without fear of rejection, mm -hmm. what would you be willing to do? Allowing the truest, deepest vulnerable, most real part of me come out. See, that's crazy. See, I really can't, don't tell her, 
I can't really give her the permission, but you just gave it to yourself. Oof. I'll take it. And so you put that in your pocket, in your wallet, and anytime you're questioning if you can really do something, and that's when you want to raise, when you want to ask your spouse for a divorce, I have, permi I have permission to be bold. I have permission. Mm -hmm. Look in the mirror mm -hmm. and say, I hereby grant myself permission too, to be bold, to be fearless, to look stupid, to tell a guy I love him, to lose weight. It has helped so many people, mm -hmm. this thing about permission. And just like in The Wizard of Oz, turns out that you've always had it inside you. You always had a heart and a brain and courage, and she had the ability to go home anytime she wanted. She just didn't know it. Wow. So what I've done for our community, especially your people, is to give, allow you to even shine brighter. Yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? It's amazing. And it's very true. It's very true that you're right. Every It's no, 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 no. So when does that flip inside of somebody to actually start saying yes, 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 yes? It's supposed to be when you're an adult. You don't. You no longer have a parent. Oh. But does it happen? I hear the most amazing. I had a lawyer come up to me and said, "I just want permission to let clients go." I had a woman say, "I want permission to relax." Why would a grown woman ask me for permission to relax? Because in her head, her voices are saying, "You got to keep going. You're not gonna make enough money. You're not good enough." This little card. I know it sounds crazy. For me, it makes all the difference. You stop for a moment. And so what we've talked about here on, you know, more than fitness is how you have a relationship with yourself. Correct. Because the truth is, I give myself permission to look great. Correct. Well, wait a second. I don't need to stuff down the emotions. I don't need to eat the chocolate cake now. I have permission to, to be on a diet, to be successful, to lose weight, to look set. Whatever it is you want permission to do. So one, we learn that we can give ourselves permission to be amazingly happy. We can name our negative and our positive. What else did you get out of it today? We not only can ha heal our relationship with ourself, but once we do, we're able to heal the relationships that we have with our friends, our family, and our, and our loved ones, right? And, and I feel like, you know, as we have been through deep, dark, hell relationships, we haven't really mm. gone into that. Um, that'll be another time. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, we get to a point where we probably weren't in love with ourselves when that was all mm -hmm. happening. And so when you are able to break through of a, an abusive situation, realizing that you are in a way abusive to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're a victim in a relationship, you're allowing that to take place. My quote for today is that you are the sum of the obstacles you overcome. Mm. So that whatever bad thing happened to you in your life, say thank you, congratulations, because you're still here and you went through it. Absolutely. People who take their own lives or end it all because they're not here to share this. So to me, life happens for you, not to you. Whatever's happened, you are the sum of that. You're looking at two women who are grown, mm -hmm. who've been through a lot. And we've chosen to share this with you, and so we're going to ask you to subscribe or stay connected to us, because I think we have a lot to offer. Also, comments and questions, I think we have outlets for both, Absolutely. so that you guys can go, hey, you know what, I want to hear you talk about this or get involved with that, because we're really open. This is a yeah. very cool relationship yeah. with all of us. So thank you for watching, yeah. and I truly think that today, in terms of relationship, we did a lot more than fitness. Yeah, we did. Ah. It is a lot more than fitness. All right, so everybody, I'm Forbes Riley. And Danita Young. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.